a beautiful day. Let's just see this uh, <laughs> Takashi Krona built <laughs> with a telephoto lens, how it looks. This is a 400 millimeter uh, telephoto lens. It's an old one, I uh, got it for free. And uh, I thought that uh, with the right adapter, which is this one, and uh, an eyepiece holder which goes to that adapter, probably this adapter is M42, or I'm not sure, but anyway, and a plus hole eyepiece, I can make actually a telescope. And uh, it had a ring already, this one, so really good. I just used one of these uh, SV Boni uh, or something Chinese from AliExpress dovetail camera adapter. Uh, you have camera foot, or you can call it. And uh, I can fit it now, and this is Sky T. That's practically a telescope. And because it's multi-element and it's already a lot corrected, I will show you. This practically means I may have here an upper chromatic telescope. So not bad for the price of a uh, nothing. I wonder what is it. Is it something that will be equal to a Takahashi FS60? This is 67 millimeter, so it actually has a bigger aperture than that. Let's just see, look at something. What about that oak tree? Quite wide field. I'm looking through this 25 millimeter fossil. On this screen, I don't see any chromatic aberration or anything. Do you see anything? Okay, on the image that I took with this uh, on the oak tree, I could see some purple fringing. Purple fringing. When I look with a no, visually without any camera or anything, I don't see any effect of that. But I think the lens of this mobile phone camera actually is introducing this purple fringing. Remember, we have elements of this uh, telescope, then the light comes through this uh, lens of the uh, mobile phone. So we are practically introducing it. So. I can say that it's color-free, visually. I've now focused on the a little bit uh, far away uh, oak tree. And I try to focus as much as possible. I don't see any color, any purple fringing. Usually you will see even visually such a purple fringing around the edges of the objects like leaves or branches. I don't see anything. Practically, I've made a <laughs> uh, upper chromatic telescope comparable to something like a Takashi FS6C. Takashi FS60 comes with a clamshell and a, a, a finder scope and something like that. For more than one thousand pound now, yeah, that's the price of today. And this one uh, didn't cost me anything; just about twenty pound uh, of those uh, camera adapters for uh, Wix and Dovetail. Uh, the f ratio of this is uh, four hundred divided by sixty-seven. That's uh, five point nine. FS sixty Takashi is also uh, five point nine. So both of them are five point nine millimeter uh, 5.9 uh, focal ratio that's the focal length divided by the objective uh, diameter so practically it is also I can confirm that visually I don't see any purple fringing around the objects on a bright background so 
is well corrected it has also a, a dew shield that you can actually can retract and protract so practically this is now my Takahashi I'm really impressed with the quality of this uh, telescope it probably will be one of the most easiest telescopes to be able to use just pick it and observe I'm going to try different eyepieces on this later and see if I can uh, I mean moon is very low now but if I can see the moon with this okay I'm now <coughs> uh, looking at the Jupiter with the my, my DIY telescope from a telephoto lens uh, I've used the 25 mm poster to find the Jupiter then I look at the Takahashi and also look for the 4 mm uh, Takahashi 7.5 mm and 4 and 4 mm Nirvana uh, I can say that there is a, a chromatic aberration that's actually worse than any other telescope that I have but when you focus it and you can actually change the diaphragm when you change the diaphragm and to reduce the aperture so it's here what will happen is that you lose the chromatic aberration the image gets good so practically by increasing the f ratio you're actually making the image better you can see details and starting to see the two cloud bands of the Jupiter nothing more than that and you can see the satellites the Galilean moons and uh, that's it uh, it's not better than a telescope I can say that but this is good uh, wide field uh, telescope and uh, it didn't cost me anything so all the components I had already but um, yeah the added bonus is that uh, you have a diaphragm. You can use a spotting scope, a spotting scope, old ones even, like the Bosch, um, uh, Bosch and Lomb one. But because they don't have a diaphragm to change the aperture and f ratio, you practically may end up with a very badly, you know, chromatic aberration. But now I have controlled it by adjusting the chromatic aberration, uh, the diaphragm, and I can adjust the, yeah, the diaphragm is here actually. So it reduces the aperture and that actually made the image really good acceptable I should say it's not at the level of a uh, upper chromatic no I was able to actually observe the Andromeda galaxy with this uh, telescope. I use a Teleview Panopti 24 mm. You can use any, you know, any plus or I piece that will do it. 25 mm, 24 mm will do easy. Uh, I use it just because I was not sure if I can find it easy, but uh, so that's the reason I use the widest angle possible. Yeah, one and a quarter eyepiece.